The comic books around the Alien and Predator franchise have given us a lot of characters. I've covered humans, xenomorphs, predators, androids, and hybrids. But one character I have not discussed yet is Elden. His physical form has changed throughout the different comic book stories, so this video will cover the full story of Elden. The story has a brief introduction on April 4th of 2090, which is three years before the movie Prometheus. A probe is sent to the planet LV-223. While it scans for various elements, it comes into contact with a life form, which could be an engineer. The events of Prometheus would end in 2094, with Elizabeth Shaw leaving the planet. About 129 years later, we are introduced to a crew aboard the command ship the Helios, with a smaller ship the Geryon docking nearby as they approach the planet LV-223. Clara plans to document the salvage mission. The year they arrive is 2219. While there are androids and synthetics who are part of the crew, most of them are constructs. Unknown to the crew, Francis is suffering from a serious medical issue. There's also a small cameo appearance of the android David from Prometheus. One crew member goes into detail about Peter Whelan's interest in LV-223. In the year 2090, he sent a probe to LV-223 to search for any signs of life. When he got enough information, he boarded the Prometheus and went to LV-223. But Mr. Whelan never came home. So she wants to finish his mission, to find out the true origins of our species, to make contact with the engineers. They originally thought LV-223 was a moon, but things look different when they land. They see a vast amount of vegetation and strange wildlife in the area. Francis would then take samples of a black oily substance they find. The readings they get are off the charts. This new liquid seems to affect almost anything it touches. Along with the black goo, a brush jungle, and various creatures, they also find a mass field with bodies. Something must have attacked them. The crew then locates the Onagur vessel. It was used by the colonists on LV-426, also known as Acheron. It was used as an escape vessel when Hadley's Hope was overrun with xenomorphs. Aliens had slipped on board and were waiting to be released, something the salvage crew was not aware of. The Onager was mentioned in the short comic book story, Aliens Field Report. It recounts what happened in the second Alien movie, but it also adds a little connection to the story of the team visiting LV-223. When the aliens attacked the Hadley's Hope colony, the Onager went missing. Some of the colonists may have survived during this time. When the few remaining colonists escaped Acheron, they crashed on LV-223. One survivor was studying the Black Who pathogen at this time and he left behind a wealth of knowledge for anyone who came across it. The humans opened the doors to the Onager, and the aliens attacked them. They tried to defend themselves, but get overwhelmed. The survivors try to run and escape. Meanwhile, Francis and Eldon discover a probe that was left behind. It reveals that the engineer ship had crashed, and its cargo of black goo had leaked, and in just 100 years, it created the jungle and those creatures they saw earlier. Back at the ship, the aliens engage the team still waiting for the others, but they don't know how to deal with them and end up locking themselves on the ship. When all this chaos is happening, Francis decides to use Eldon's engineered blood as a filter for the black goo. He thinks this will be able to separate the mutation properties and create a cure for diseases. And this is where his plan fails. Francis had good intentions, but not enough knowledge testing with the black goo. As he injects it into Eldon's body, it starts to transform him. Francis is then taken by fear and regret. He runs away, but Eldon chases him. His flesh is melting away, transforming his body. Eldon now thinks Francis has betrayed him. Eldon shows up by the ship that is swarmed by xenomorphs, and for some reason, he is able to communicate with the aliens. He then opens the door to the ship, and the aliens attack the survivors. Eldon takes control of the Helios ship and leaves in search of Francis. Prior to this, Galgo was ordered to take Piper, Higgins, and Francis to the Persis ship. They were supposed to help take out the aliens, but instead, they changed their minds. There was no way they could fight off all the aliens coming up from everywhere, so they took a vote and agreed to leave the survivors behind on the planet. As the remaining humans venture through the jungle, they make their way through an engineer ship. They end up losing more members until only three of them are left. 
The story continues with Eldon chasing Galgo through space. He bargains with Galgo to turn over Francis when they dock with the Garion. Just as Francis is about to get handed over to Eldon, a group of predators boards their ship. They are in search of Galgo, either for the weapon he possessed or the location of any engineers. A battle breaks out between the aliens, predators, and Eldon. We see that Eldon's body can regenerate any damaged tissue. This lets him survive a shot from the plasma caster weapon. His stomach also forms into a mutated mouth, which can be used in combat. Since his body carries the black goo pathogen, this results in him infecting a predator who attacked him. Despite them fighting each other, Eldon is strong enough to defeat one of the hunters. His skills are admired by another, and he is given a mark by one of the Yauchwas. Eldon understands that these creatures follow a set of rituals, but he has no interest in that. All he wants is to find Francis. The infected predator would then mutate into a hulking, mindless beast, becoming incredibly strong and resilient. It takes out another predator and some aliens. Meanwhile, Eldon is then attacked by the xenomorphs. He has now lost control of them, but he fights back and survives. This is when Francis orders the other constructs to ambush Eldon and they trap him. And Francis takes a sample of Eldon's tainted blood. With time running out, he thinks this might be the only way to save himself. He believes this might cure his disease. He injects the blood into his body, but it turns out this was a mistake. Francis also turns into a giant muscular beast. He thinks the disease is turning into fuel for growth. Francis and Eldon team up to fight against the mutated predator. After its defeat, Eldon welcomes Francis back, but their friendship does not last long. It turns out Francis was wrong about the accelerant. The black pathogen did not cure him. It only increased at the rate of which his own cells would break apart. Francis tells Eldon, go far away. You get to live forever. Do something with it. As Francis passes away, Eldon keeps his finger in a box to keep his memory. The xenomorphs on the ship locate Eldon, and he seems to regain control over them once again. But now, they drift through space. They have all the time they need. They have forever. Eldon would be absent when Ahab fought an engineer on LV-223. But when that story ends, Ahab teams up with a few human survivors, which include Galgo, Angela, Jill, and Chris. Then, out of nowhere, the Helio ship crashes, and what emerges from the ship is not what they expected. Eldon has returned. From Angela's orders, he came back, because he was part of the crew. While Eldon tries to create a bullhorn, he still needs an amplifier to send out a distress signal. They later find out the Prometheus ship was buried within the mountain, and a beacon is inside. If they can reach that beacon, they might have a chance of being rescued. A plan is devised to reach a drilling vehicle, but first, they must get rid of the aliens and its queen. Eldon helps them fight off the aliens, and Ahab ends up defeating the queen alien. The queen grew so large in a small area that she could not escape. Ahab then approaches Eldon and notices the mark of his clan on his forehead. This is enough reason for Ahab to accept Eldon as his brother in combat. They are able to take the drilling ship and make their way into the mountain to locate the beacon, but then their ship is hit by acid blood. The mountain is actually alive. They locate the signal but are blocked off. They speculate that a life form was on board the Prometheus, then it came into contact with the Blacku pathogen and it grew to such a big size that it became the mountain. This mountain is actually the Deacon alien. As the mountain starts to retaliate to the intruders, they fear this might be the end for them, but it's not. Eldon sacrifices his body, he lets himself get absorbed, but takes temporary control of its actions. He opens a hole for them to escape, but as Eldon loses control, he is lost to the mountain. Eldon is gone, and this is where the story of Eldon ends. The rest of the story is continued in the Life and Death comic books. During production of the story, Eldon has undergone various design changes. When Eldon was infected with the black goo pathogen, one idea was to have him start off as an egg. This is where he would start morphing into a monster, but this was never part of the official story. There was one idea of making him a female called Eldina. She was supposed to end up being pregnant, and she would give birth to these synthetic xenomorphs. Now these aliens had a more metallic look to them, but in the end, they chose this design. They did try giving him three arms, but later changed that to four arms. During this story of Eldon's mutation, you can see he grew some type of appendages on his back. But during his final transformation, they would form into a small pair of arms. 
So that covers the full story of Elden. What did you think about this character? Tell me in the comment section. If you want to see more videos like this, then subscribe to my channel and turn on notifications. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching. My name is Carlos or Acid Glow, and I'll see you in the next video.